So have you always lived in Augusta? Uh, yes. So you were born and raised okay. here? Um, so for me, I'm pretty much the same. I've been born and raised in Augusta. Mm-hmm. Um, could you, t- or I live in a, um, let's say, single family, two story, like five bedroom type of home. Mm-hmm. Could you tell me what kind of home you live in? I live in, I guess, single, just one floor, four bedrooms, um, single family home. Okay. Um, so, have you ever invested in solar, either rooftop solar for your home on your property or as part of a business? No. No. Was that ever, like, an option for you? Uh, I would say not really an option for me because it was my parents' home. Okay. However, if it was my home, then if it was an option, I probably would seek it out. Okay. Do you rent a place? Do I rent? Not yeah. anymore, but I was renting out. I have been renting for four years now. Okay, so So when you were renting the house, was that ever an option? No, it was never an option. So if that was an option, would that be something you'd be interested in? Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I'd like to talk a little bit about rooftop solar in general. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you this map of the United States. Just circle or mark the areas you think uh, solar is mostly adopted in the country. Hmm. And you said just mark it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what do you think makes those areas different from, say, Georgia? Um, it seems that my like perspective, the further west you go, maybe the more, I guess, um, I don't know what the right term is, like energy friendly, environmental friendly they are, and also because I know there's like a lot of issues going on. And, just, I guess, like, natural issues with the environment that maybe they try to prevent having other issues, like California, they're constantly having, like, fires and things like that, so it just seems that being from the South, like, we're just always behind. Gotcha. <laughs> um, so, what kind of people do you think live in that area that you mark? What, and you, you say what kind of people, like, ethnic, ethnicity, race, or, like... Um, so it can be however you want to take that. Okay. But, like, what do you think makes those people different from um, or more willing to adopt solar? It may be yeah, cost of living. Yeah, it's cheaper to live in Georgia. So, I mean, if you think about certain places like California, Colorado, yes, it may be, as far as the environment, it may be... Um, appease people more, um, appease more to people, but the cost of living is so high, you need to offset that by other options, so whether that be reducing the amount of energy that you use, how much you're getting charged for that, things like that, so, um, I think they make more money, but cost of living is high, so they have to offset it somehow. Um, so why do you think people have the most solar on their rooftops in that area? Um, I mean, it's not really necessarily cold. I don't think like over there. Not as cold it would be in some other regions. Um, there may be laws and policies that are in place. Like, you don't really have a choice, per se. Uh-huh. Um, so it's like you just need to adhere to whatever the state regulations are. Um. So we're going to do the same thing, but with the state of Georgia. So okay. I'll take that one. Um, so just mark what areas in Georgia you think have the most rooftop solar. Um, and just the areas that are listed? No, any of them. Um, I don't know where Tifton is at, but that would be the one that I would say. So that's going to be more, probably about to tell you wrong, but one of these two near okay. Albany. Um, I only say that because... Anytime you have a school that has agriculture or anything like that or environmental stuff, they're probably going to um, have something like that. Um, maybe making about Augusta. Um, yeah, I don't really know. Okay. 
So why do you think those areas make it different from Augusta? Um, well, Augusta's kind of an industrial town, so I don't think we're really on the side of conserving. Mm -hmm. We're on the more of the expense side, like whatever it takes to get the products made. We can't really focus on conserving energy if we have, like we have um, graphic images, imaging now, but it used to be international paper. Mm -hmm. My day used to work at Partner Gamble. Like, those places aren't focused on, it's I mean, all down Mike Padgett Highway is factory, so we're just not on that end of the spectrum as far as, to my knowledge, conserving energy, or that we don't have a lot of rules and regulations set in place that enforce people to do that stuff or to even educate them. That would be my guess. Okay. What kind of people do you think live in those communities? Here? Yeah, that you mark. That I mark. People that are aware of the environment more so. I wouldn't say necessarily care more about it, but just aware of how you can maybe reduce how much energy you're using. You don't have to have everything from, I guess, like a traditional power source. Okay. So you think it's mostly an awareness thing? Yeah, and also it being more of a um, rural kind of um, area, not so much, I guess, urban or in the city. Some more space, uh, maybe farming, things like that. Okay. Um, so what about your close friends? I'll take this from you. Um, in the state of Georgia, do any of them have solar that you know of? No. Why do you think they don't? I think because they choose not to. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean, some of them actually own homes, but um, I just think that it's not something that um, is talked about a lot. Or, like I said, it's enforced, so it's like, well, it's not that big of a deal yet. It's not that big of a movement yet in Augusta, so it's kind of like, well, I'll save energy by buying special light bulbs, or uh, maybe we focus more on recycling, or this whole movement of being in like a minimalist, things like that. So they'll conserve energy in other ways. Um, well, now, if you don't mind, we're going to ask a few questions regarding the role of food in your day-to-day -day life. So, if you could, please tell me what your regular day with food looks like. So, what do your meals and snacks typically look like? Um, water, egg whites, bananas. I really don't really eat any junk food. Um, I don't eat a whole lot of meat. I would not be vegan or vegetarian, but I don't really like buying meat from the grocery store kind of skeptical about that um so pretty healthy um a lot of fruits a lot of veggies um coffee a lot of coffee gotcha um so for me like my typical go-to snack would be any type of fruit because I love all kinds of fruit mm -hmm. um so could you tell me what your go-to meal or snack is and why um go-to meal or snack would probably be I eat an odd amount, an odd amount of egg whites like every day. So like a lot of, a lot of egg whites. I don't really eat the yolks. Um, probably Brussels sprouts. I eat a lot of Brussels sprouts. It's probably my like go-to meal is like egg whites and some kind of vegetable. Okay. Um, how often do you cook your own meals? Um, every week. Like uh, so I probably when I'm able to, I cook. So if I'm eating three times a day, then usually one of those meals are cooked. I would say based off the last four years. I recently changed that, but it was a lot of takeout, mm -hmm. just like convenient stuff. Like I can make the salad, but I'll just buy it. Gotcha. Um, so are you the only person that makes the decision about the food purchases in your household? Um, no. So what are other people's roles in that? Um, so my mom, my mom does most of the grocery shopping. Um, the stuff is probably not as healthy. So the rest of my family, they're more snackers. So it's like cookies, um, chips, little things you can kind of like grab and like literally grab and go. Um, juice, 
So not the worst stuff you can eat, but not the best stuff. Okay. Um, how often do you purchase food for your household? Once or twice a week. So like on average, your mom I may go grocery shopping about six times or so. Okay. Um, so paint this picture for me. Let's say you're going to take a trip to purchase food. What does that look like? Uh, so I'm not going to Walmart. I don't mm-hmm. shop at Walmart. I really don't shop at Target either as far as groceries to a lot. I'm usually going to Sprouts. Uh, it's a market downtown. It's by the Croc Center in Augusta. Um, some kind of farmer's market if I can make it there. Um, used to go to Whole Foods, but they closed. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to a place like that. Not, I mean, those are still franchise places, but I'm going to a place that's more, I guess, health-oriented, even though they still have stuff that's not good for you. Gotcha. Um, so what about when it comes to feeding you and your family? What are some challenges that y'all might face? Um, I guess, I mean, if you look at it as a whole, the affordability so when you're feeding two men, two grown men, two adult men, maybe you can't buy like everything that's organic, things like that. So I mean, even though I guess we would be considered I mean, who well we are, a middle class family, um, that can still be costly. So trying to buy healthy stuff, but also balance like well are you going to buy the small bag of Brussels sprouts that cost ten dollars that are organic or are you going to buy a bigger bag that only costs you five dollars but it can serve you know last for a longer amount of time so not buying the worst food but you can't buy everything organic i mean you'll walk out there with spending a hundred dollars and two bags so 